Hi there, my name is Phil Wickens. I am a CAS master teacher. Welcome to Delve In for 12 Min. This is a first in a series of online CPD sessions for you, the teacher, to improve your subject knowledge of the national curriculum in computer science and to give you ideas to take back to the classroom and get stuck in straight away with your children. So this first session is all about algorithms. Uh, the backbone, if you will, of computational thinking. So in Key Stage 1, it says in the national curriculum that children need to, by the end of Key Stage 1, understand what algorithms are, how they are implemented as programs on digital devices, and that programs execute by following precise and unambiguous instructions. In other words, a computer will only do exactly what you tell it. So, at the end of Key Stage 1, you want children to be maybe creating their own algorithms for uh, humans to follow, making sure that they make sense, making sure they're in order, and we'll come on to that in a moment. By the end of Key Stage 2, pupils should be using logical reasoning to explain how some simple algorithms work and to detect and correct errors in algorithms and programs. In other words, debugging, and we'll come on to that a bit later as well. So, what actually is an algorithm? Pupils will need to know that an algorithm is step-by-step -step instructions to solve a problem or achieve a goal, and they have to be as precise and as clear as possible. Now, obviously, the older the child, uh, or the higher the ability, you would expect them to be a little more precise, a little more clear, and a little more detailed in exactly what they want to happen. Lower down in the age ranges, you might go for very simple steps, but they still need to be making sense and in order as well. We're going to have a few examples of what algorithms could look like in those different age ranges. Um, the most typical algorithm you might come across would be the flowchart algorithm. Uh, and this is probably what springs to mind or what you may have seen uh, when you've Googled it. Um, and this is a, a very obvious choice because it has flow lines depicting the direction. It will have step by step so that an algorithm can't suddenly just jump to another line or flit around. It has to go in sequence. And there will be very specific shapes denoting different parts of the algorithm. For example, there may be an oval at the top to depict the start and an oval at the bottom to predict the end. Uh, there will also be shapes like uh, rectangles or parallelograms to denote processes or input and output. And there is also the decision diamond, as we call it, where you may have a branching uh, of two different directions for that particular algorithm. Please note, there is only ever two different directions. There cannot be any more than that. So think yes or no in answer to a question which would be in that decision diamond. You will also have things like looping within an algorithm. Now, looping can be very important. For example, if I was talking to my children about an algorithm that would then be implemented in a set of zebra crossing lights, for example, I would not say there would need to be a person pressing a switch going light on, lights off, lights on, lights off all day long. It would be much clearer to have a program running that for you. This program would not be pages and pages and pages of light on, light off, light on, light off. Obviously with a delay in between for your higher ability children. There would be a loop involved. And if there was a loop involved, there might not even be an ending to that algorithm. It may simply go start, light on, short delay, light off, short delay, and then your flow line would loop back up to the top with the light on. Another example of making sure that you could get the sequence right for children is to maybe do something like how to fill up your water bottle. A very simple task, you could say, could you please write an algorithm for that? 
You could even give them a pro forma where you've got the boxes already laid out with the start and the finish. If you were doing the flowchart example, they would have to be very clear on when they would turn on the tap, when they would take off the lid, when they would hold the bottle under the tap. Obviously you get those things in the wrong order and the bottle won't actually fill up. So then you can talk very clearly about sequence and sequencing your algorithms so that they actually achieve the thing that you need them to achieve. A really good way to start with the children before you even mention the word algorithm is to start with something like the Hokey Cokey. My personal favourite, and for those of you who've been to any of my sessions before, you've probably been dragged up the front to act it out with me. The reason I choose the Hokey Cokey is because children already know it. Okay, we're not relying on them knowing the sequence of traffic lights or what happens uh, in another real world situation. The hokey cokey, they would have done it. They know how it fits in, they know the steps. So we can act it out, we can have fun acting it out. I then may say, if you were gonna write these as instructions for an alien who wanted to learn the hokey cokey, but you couldn't physically show him, how would you do it? What would you need to say? And this is where it gets really fun for children. For example, they might say, well, the first instruction is to put your left leg in. And then you as a teacher acting this out, you say, my left leg in what? In a bucket? In someone's face? In a load of custard? Be precise. Left foot forward one step. Left foot back one step. And encourage them to be more clear and more precise with their instructions. You could get to the bit where it says, in, out, in, out. And then you could put a loop in there. You could even specify how many times you are looping it. Then once the children have written their instructions of how to do the hokey cokey, then there's the fun part. You can get them to read it to another group where the other group has to follow their instructions to the letter. You could even take part in that as well, if you're feeling brave. The idea of this is to show children the exact preciseness needed and obviously with a higher ability you would want that preciseness to be even more detailed. I've been in many a classroom where we get to the part of shake it all about, I am shaking my leg about and they forget to tell me to stop. So in the next part where I'm doing the hokey cokey and turning around Everyone's in fits because my leg is still shaking up in the air and I'm trying to do multiple things at once. When you start talking to them about how to fix their algorithms, then you can introduce the phrase of debugging, which is a very interesting phrase, a little bit of history here. It's called debugging because in one of the very first computers which had actual physical metal plates that opened and shut, a moth got stuck. And it took them a while to find this bug and remove it to then make the computer function again. Hence the phrase debugging. Debugging may mean they have a mistake to fix. It may mean there is some extra thing in there they need to remove or they've left something out that they need to then put in. Debugging is fun and you can use lots of role play in the classroom to achieve that kind of thing. Another type of algorithm could be more pictorial and less like a flowchart. For example, this could be part of a design process preparing for then implementing the algorithm in some computer software, for example, in Scratch. You may ask the children to develop a storyboard of exactly what will happen in their Scratch animation or in their game. This still adheres to the rules of the algorithm because the steps will be in order. There will be clear and precise instruction, both pictorially and written underneath each image of what is going to happen in their animation. You could also have a central concept map idea where you would get the children to perhaps design their screen, what it will look like, and then around the edge, start to number what will happen step by step. Again, reminding them of the sequence 
any loops they would like, and also making sure it's clear and precise. I really hope that this has been helpful for you in your quest to discover more about algorithms and that now you can hopefully take this back to the classroom and start implementing that with your class. Thank you for listening and I hope you tune in for the next episode of Delve In for 12 Minutes.